Western Sahara in North Africa is one of the most sparsely populated places on Earth. Half a million people live here, spread out over 100,000 square miles of mostly desert terrain. Colonized by Spain in the 19th century, this area has been a disputed territory for the last 50 years. Dakla is the capital of one of three Moroccan regions that lie within Western Sahara. The city was founded 500 years ago by Spanish settlers, and its population comprises Sahrawis and Moroccans. Located on a narrow peninsula, fishing has long played a vital role in Dakla's economy. But in recent years, this stretch of the Atlantic coast has become known for an altogether more modern activity. Kiteboarding is a combination of wakeboarding, windsurfing and paragliding. Riders can reach speeds approaching 80 kilometers per hour and heights in excess of 10 meters. Morocco has been a fixture on kiteboarding's world tour since 2010. Mauricio Toscano is the head of the Professional Kiteboard Riders Association. We're in our fifth year here and it's always been very popular because it's a real wind machine. It really is amazing. You can count on there being strong winds every day. So it's become one of the classics because conditions are always so good. And even though some aspects of the place are a little basic, it's a firm favorite with the kiteboarders. Dakla is the second of 12 scheduled stops on the PKRA World Tour. With competitions taking place in Europe, Africa, Asia and Latin America, kiteboarding has become a truly global sport, thanks to its wide-ranging appeal and advances in equipment design. I've been involved in this sport since its beginnings back in 1997 and it's changed hugely over that time. Back then, the kites were quite dangerous. They were difficult to handle and there were a lot of accidents. But the materials and construction techniques have improved so much that it's relatively easy and safe to learn the sport now. These days, the riders reach really high speeds, do huge aerials and perform amazing tricks. Things that I never imagined would be possible back when we started out. Following his victory at the season's opening event in Panama, Christophe Tack tops the men's standings. The Belgian rider is renowned for his freestyle trickery. But during his early years on the tour, the 21-year-old struggled to translate his undoubted talent into meaningful results. I started to focus more on performing each trick properly. I went from attempting everything to thinking, this is what I need for the competition, so I need to make sure it's 100% right. Over the years, your mentality also changes, and you become more confident. You believe you can do it because you've proved yourself in competition. So you say to yourself, let's do the same again, no excuses. It's really worked for me, and it's been a huge step forward. One of several kiters on the trail of tack is Dutchman Juri Zoon. A two-time world champion, Zoon is one of the most powerful riders on the tour, but his 2013 season was cut short after he dislocated his shoulder whilst competing in Germany. I've been through a seven-month rehabilitation program and now everything feels okay. I'm hoping to put in a good performance here, but this is my first competition since the injury, so I'll have to see how things go. The results so far have been quite good, but there's plenty of room for improvement. The sport recently revised its judging system, a move that was met with widespread approval across the kiting community. Previously, competitors were assessed on their general performance during a heat, but now it's much more specific. They can perform up to 12 tricks, the best five of which count towards their overall heat score. The consensus is that the new criteria place an emphasis on quality rather than quantity. 
Over the years, one person who's consistently found favour with the judges is Gisela Pulido. The nine-time world champion is the undisputed queen of kiteboarding. Originally from Barcelona, Gisela is now based in the southern Spanish town of Tarifa. She took up kiteboarding aged seven and won her first world title three years later. Her prodigious talent and astonishing success mean that she's in constant demand and has a whole host of endorsement deals. But Pulido isn't putting all her eggs in one basket. In addition to her kiteboarding commitments, she's studying online for a degree in journalism. Although she's been competing at the sport's highest level for over a decade, this 20-year-old veteran of the tour shows no signs of burning out. The standard is really high. The girls are getting better and better every year, so it's more difficult to win. That's what keeps me on my toes and gives me the drive to keep improving, to learn new tricks, polish my performance and stay at the top. I think I have plenty of years left on the tour because I'm still really motivated and raring to go. Pulido proves to be as good as her word. After winning the first phase of competition known as the single elimination, she faces Brazilian kiter Bruna Cajia in the double elimination final. Despite performing well in her earlier heats, Cajia struggles in the strong winds during the final. Pulido eases to victory and rises to the top of the women's championship standings. Yuri Zun impresses in his comeback event. After riding well early on, he begins to tire and struggles for consistency as the competition progresses. But the Dutchman still manages to finish a creditable fifth overall. The men's final sees Christoph Tack go head-to-head -head with his friend and rival, Mark Jacobs. Although Tack nails several solid aerials, he falls one short of the five tricks on which the overall score is calculated. Jacobs, who's known for his powerful riding style, flourishes in the finals 30 knot wins. The New Zealander puts on a masterful display to win the second PKRA title of his career. Yeah, I'm super stoked there, like, I've been beat, beating my tech a few times now and it's just driven me even, even more to just beat him, like, yeah, so, yeah, I managed to do it. It's my kind of conditions. Uh, I love being powered. Yeah, it worked out, and I'm super stoked, man. With his victory in Dakla, Jacobs moves up to second behind Tack in the men's title standings as Kiteboarding's World Tour heads to France for round three.